Now, we've seen our fair share of family ventures on the show, but this has to be the worst of them all. Give me a break. I'm talking about a family that was ridden with disasters right from the time that Chef Ramsay arrived all the way till they called it quits for good. Believe me, Chef Ramsay's patience was probably pushed to its limits during this rescue. I feel like I'm in the middle of a rehearsal for friends. When he first took up the challenge, Chef Ramsay headed to Fairlawn, New Jersey, where he had to save Campania from itself. Right from a dysfunctional family dynamic to a kitchen that probably needed an exorcism, Campania had it all. Now, you're probably wondering if they managed to turn things around after Chef Ramsay left. The truth is, the story took a really dark turn after Chef Ramsay's visit. Well, I'm not gonna spoil it for you right now, but let's just say the road to redemption wasn't exactly paved with gold for Campania. So this very restaurant was only bought 18 months prior to Chef Ramsay's visit by one Joe Cerniglia. But it was already pretty close to closing its doors. Also, the restaurant's finances were pretty good until Joe decided to take over. And just like that, in under 18 months, Joe Cerniglia successfully managed to destroy a perfectly good, profitable business. You see, Joe may have started with a successful joint, but his laid-back attitude turned the place into a playground for the staff. And the worst part was the condition the kitchen was left in. These are not working ovens, so they've now become storage for us. Yep, the broken ovens doubled as storage units, and the walk-in freezer was barely functioning. Tell me you'd love to eat some warm chicken straight out of the freezer. Anyway, the ever-compounding issues left Joe flustered, and it sent the rest of the staff down the same path. While some of his employees were way too relaxed, some others thought he was completely domineering. Joe gets very easily flustered and frustrated, which a lot of times winds up making everybody break down. Either way, Joe's poor management had turned the restaurant into Comedy Central, with the staff and their unending practical jokes. I'm still a kid, I still have a tongue ring, I still have a tattoo. I may give it a pass if it was at all funny, but yeah, not exactly the ideal kitchen environment, right? I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. I worry about Melissa. I worry about the boys. It is not easy. And while Joe was busy having fun with his staff, this is what his wife was going through. You put everything into one venture. It takes a, a lot of courage, you know. Uh-huh. His family was in dire straits. As if that wasn't enough, the financial situation really didn't help matters. I owe my purveyors about $80,000 right now in cold hard cash. Yep, over a quarter of a million dollars in debt with suppliers and vendors knocking on the door for $80,000. And the crazy part was that some of them actually used to barge into the restaurant during working hours just to collect money from Joe. I mean, it was pretty disturbing to watch. Get something out to you on uh, Monday. It's true, Campania needed way more than just a touch of Chef Ramsay's magic. They needed a miracle. Now, let's cut over to the moment when the famous chef arrived at the restaurant, and he wasn't too thrilled about it. Hardly a uh, perfect location for a restaurant on a strip mall. But after meeting Joe, Chef Ramsay's overall impression about the place took a turn. Welcome to New Jersey. Is this a, uh, are you always pointing or is that just? I point a lot, I use my hands, you know, I'm Southern Italian, so. Pretty much everything about Joe was getting on Chef Ramsay's nerves. To be specific, his habit of excessively pointing was especially annoying. Do you also get ticked off by weird behavioral habits like this? If you do, then make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And make sure to check out my channel's Discord server where we can discuss some of the craziest moments from the show. Weird behavioral tics and all. Anyway, Chef Ramsay tried to shake it off and sat down for the tasting with a fresh mind. He ordered tortellini soup, ravioli, and pistachio cranberry crusted chicken. But despite his order being placed, the kitchen didn't really respond. You're hungry? I'm hungry. I'm hungry, yeah. What is going on in there? To make things worse, their antics were audible from the dining room, setting a less than impressive tone for the customers. While Chef Ramsay was patiently waiting for his food, you won't believe what the so-called chefs were up to. The brow. Relax. <laughs> they were doing everything except for cooking. However, finally, after a long wait, the tortellini soup arrived at the table. And it was enough to destroy Chef Ramsay's composure completely. It is bland and tasteless. But here's the funny part. When Chef Ramsay asked if the soup was homemade, he was hit with a real head scratcher. It's homemade, brought in from a place that makes homemade. I mean, talk about mental gymnastics routine. My head is just spinning trying to follow that logic. Anyway, Chef Ramsay's next dish was the spicy sausage ravioli. And guess how that turned out? Hey, yeah, yeah. 
You wouldn't want to go back to the office with that breath, would you? Yeah, no points for guessing. Just imagine being served a dish that's basically drowning in garlic and sauce. Yeah, the guy needed mouthwash stat. But according to the staff and the chef, they had a really good reason to throw a mountain of garlic into the dish. Turns out, it's the best part of the dish. So, why not? I mean, seriously, to hell with flavor, right? Poor Chef Ramsay couldn't even find the words to respond to that explanation. And then, he received a final blow with the chicken turning out to be way too dry and sickeningly sweet. It's dry, it's sweet, and it's... <sighs> oh dear. The famous chef was burning with the urge to share his feedback, but someone wasn't too happy about it. He didn't like the chicken, didn't like the sauce, didn't like the crust, thought it was well done, hated it. However, he ended up deciding to give his honest feedback. It was time to lay down the truth. Italian food is about russicness, phenomenal ingredients, and something that's relaxed and casual, but in a delicious way. And I just found it you know, somewhat boring, to be honest. He also mentioned how irritating it was to hear the staff scream and laugh while the customers waited for close to an hour or more to receive their food. And trust me, Joe was not happy with Chef Ramsay's feedback. My food, I think, is, is pure and honest and good. I think it was a mistake that I did this. I still can't believe the audacity that he would say inviting Chef Ramsay was a mistake. But guess what? He'd be eating his words very soon because Chef Ramsay was on a mission. So he went on to inspect the kitchen and found it to be surprisingly clean. Now, the real shocker was when he opened one of the fridges. And what he found there was disgusting. There were portions and portions of mussels that were broken open, which basically meant that they were no better than spoiled. And they were dangerous to boot. But it wasn't only about the mussels. When Chef Ramsay took a closer look, he was left speechless. Bag after bag after bag. There's nearly two months worth of chopped garlic there. The fridge was completely packed to the brim as if they were expecting a full house every night for an entire month. But reality hits hard. With customer traffic so low, it's clear that they were wasting a ton of money. The debt figure they were working with suddenly made a lot more sense. Now, Chef Ramsay had to discuss these issues with the owner and the other chefs. He wanted to knock some sense into them and perhaps even redesign the humongous menu while he was at it. But that's when Chef Ramsay felt like he had stumbled into a high school cafeteria. There were staff everywhere, probably more than customers on any given day. And this called for some immediate action. Chef Ramsay gathered everyone like a no-nonsense principal and asked Joe to do something unthinkable. 11 members of staff. Staff costs. Right. Who's going home? Yup, Joe was asked to sack his employees. They were clearly overstaffed. If everyone had something to do, the goofing around problem would just solve itself. And of course, it's no secret, it would be lighter on his wallet too. It was definitely a difficult decision for Joe, who considered his staff more like friends and less like employees. However, he had to do it anyway. With the fat finely trimmed, Chef Ramsay decided to observe the dinner service, and just as it kicked off, chaos ensued. Look, I, I had some polenta wedges, they went back there and, they, and they're lost. They're right here, they're not me. Orders were flying around like confetti, and the poor customers were stuck in the dining room, twiddling their thumbs. And before even half the orders made it out, the dining room was full of complaints. It's been taking a long time for the appetizers. Starving. Like, you can't even blame them. And right in the midst of it all, there was this one customer who did something crazy. Yeah, how you doing? Um, I'd like to place an order for a pizza. <laughs> I'm sure that pizza will arrive way before anything even thinks about coming out of the kitchen. This kind of reminds me of a certain Hell's Kitchen moment too. Anyway, the kitchen was so overwhelmed and the staff started to crumble under the pressure. 30 minutes for salad, I have people pointing at me and they're going like this and I don't understand. I can't tell them, you know, how hard it is to put lettuce in a bowl. And on the other end, Chef Ramsay was still expediting, blocking some serious disasters from hitting the tables. Stop, 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 stop. Joe? Yes. Guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not serving that. Meanwhile, guess what was happening in the dining room? It was like an ongoing takeout carnival. Unbelievable. Yup, the portions were huge. And so, as a result, customers were consistently leaving with doggy bags bigger than their appetites. Now, Chef Ramsay kept it real with Joe, saying, dude, we're constantly draining our wallets with these supersized portions. However, Joe kept claiming it was their ongoing signature thing, what people consistently wanted. Bro didn't even realize he was throwing away his money, since that's where most of the leftovers were probably going. And even after Chef Ramsay sat Joe down and made the food waste situation clear, Joe wasn't budging. He continuously stuck to his guns about the ongoing hefty portions being their claim to fame. And boom! 
Suddenly, Joe was hit with a wave of embarrassment. He wasn't going to let Chef Ramsay school him right in front of his customers. However, Chef Ramsay wasn't willing to back down. He straight up asked him if he was afraid, but all Joe wanted was to get Chef Ramsay out of the picture. I guess he forgot that his food was the biggest embarrassment of the night. But the real challenge came on the third day. So, Chef Ramsay sat down with Joe's wife, Melissa, and honestly, what she said was so heartbreaking. People like us put everything on the line for a dream. And I just want to see him have time, you know, to succeed. Melissa laid it out for Chef Ramsay with no filters. She talked about how Joe was risking everything they had for the restaurant. Although they had hit a dead end when it came to finances, she still believed that Joe had a passion bubbling inside of him. He just needed a little bit of a reality check. But things were so bad that Melissa was practically begging Chef Ramsay for help. If the restaurant took a nosedive, they would end up waving goodbye to their house as well. The famous chef finally understood the gravity of this situation. Behind the noisy kitchen and a carefree owner was a family who desperately needed some help. And so, Chef Ramsay promised Melissa that he'd help turn things around. After giving the kitchen crew some pearls of wisdom on food prep and presentation, Chef Ramsay unveiled a new star dish, meatballs. They hit the streets, rolling in a branded truck, rocking tees that screamed, New Jersey's best meatballs. And trust me, the new dish was an instant hit. Don't get hit by a car for them. The best meatballs in New Jersey! However, before revamping the hell out of the place, Chef Ramsay brought Joe aside to have a real conversation. And this is when Joe spilled the beans on being in a whopping $200,000 of debt, and Chef Ramsay was like, dude, time to get serious about this. And the next thing you know, Chef Ramsay's crew had taken over the place to pull an overnight makeover. I am a little overwhelmed right now. I have really no words to say. From a sleeker banner that practically screamed come in to a spiffed up seating area, the restaurant received a major facelift. Back in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay gifted a whole new stove and replaced the cutlery with smaller plates to tackle those huge portion sizes. What's more, Chef Ramsay then unleashed a menu revolution, featuring the star of the show, those legendary meatballs now rocking both the starter and entree categories. And just to spice things up, he also threw in a bingo competition for the staff. Sell every dish on the menu and you're walking away with a cool hundred bucks. Now that is how you turn a restaurant around in style. So the grand relaunch kicked off and the customers were loving the new dishes, except for one tough-to-please lady who thought her steak was very tough. Even I can cook better. That, that's horrible. Yeah, there is always that one person who's never satisfied with anything in their life. And Chef Ramsay decided to quality check the dish before telling her this. My steak was tough. Okay, good. But madam, unfortunately you're talking out your rear. Uh-huh. As much as he schools you, the man is known for standing up for his crew. Anyway, everything was cruising along smoothly until Joe started to feel the heat of the orders piling up. He took a breather, chatting it up with the diners, leaving poor Jean to handle the kitchen solo. And surprise, surprise, orders started piling up again and Joe started to blame it on being short-staffed. But it really didn't end there. Another happy customer wanted a word with the manager and Joe failed miserably at that duty. He dashed back to the kitchen, leaving chaos in his wake. Now, this unhappy customer took her complaint to the front of the restaurant, boldly declaring this. I felt like I was eating mango. Well, somebody else had the fish and it tasted like pond water. I'm listening to the switch. I want to go strangle her. And right in front of Joe's poor mother, too. But hold up. That's when a satisfied customer stepped up outside the restaurant and confronted the lady. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? And that was just the beginning. The situation soon escalated quickly into a full-blown showdown in the parking lot. Very conveniently, a police car cruising by made a timely entrance of its own into the scene, breaking up the fight and shooing the customers away. It doesn't get much more wild than that, I'll tell you. Anyway, after all that drama, it was time for Chef Ramsay to deliver the final verdict. Yeah. Oh, it's, I want to see you run it. Yeah. Yeah. He reminded Joe to stay laser focused on leading the kitchen and suggested that he limit his time mingling in the dining room. Surprisingly, the relaunch night wrapped up on a high note. The team was firing on all cylinders, communication was on point, and to top it all off, a waitress nailed the bingo challenge. Satisfied with the turn of events, Chef Ramsay gave the whole crew a pat on the back, praising them for their stellar performance, serving 203 customers and raking in a whopping $7,500. That was three times the cash compared to the previous night. However, Campania's journey took a poignant turn following Chef Ramsay's visit. Initially, there was a surge in business, and Joe's culinary prowess shone through with victories in prestigious competitions. 
Yet, post-filming, Yelp reviews painted a much more sour picture, with positive reviews and critiques on certain menu items and service wait times. In a very surprising move, Joe sold the restaurant to Campania Holding Corp in September of 2010. Tragically, just eight days later, Joe took his own life, jumping off the George Washington Bridge into the Hudson River. It was later revealed that he was in a relationship with Jessica, a pastry chef from the restaurant, and not the waitress featured in the episode. This unfortunate turn of events cast a shadow over Campania's fate. Joe's personal struggles took a toll, and the restaurant closed its doors in January of 2011. This story serves as a poignant reminder of the intricate challenges faced not just in the restaurant industry, but in the complexities of life itself. It highlights the profound impact beyond the kitchen's hustle and bustle. Now, here's something I dug up about Joe's passing. In an article by Carla Zanoni, a DNA Info reporter slash producer revealed detailed information that caused Joe's death. It's a real roller coaster, affair, family troubles, and cocaine, all leading to his tragic suicide from the George Washington Bridge. One of the causes of Joe's death was due to an overdose. The police had discovered him in rough shape, sweating buckets and shaking, needing urgent medical attention. After the life-saving treatment, he was slapped with an arrest warrant for being high on narcotics, as reported by the New York Post. Now, let's not forget the affair he had with the 27-year-old pastry chef, Jessica Morata. The affair came to a devastating end when Cerniglia took that fatal leap from the bridge on September 27th. Rumors about a rocky family life and marriage were swirling, and as the family gathered for Sir Nigley's memorial service in Wayne, New Jersey, details started to emerge. The Post reported that although the couple had been separated for some time, no legal documents had been filed. As if that wasn't enough drama, Melissa had previously settled a $12,500 lawsuit against Joe's father and stepmother. The lawsuit stemmed from an incident in 2007 when she claimed that their dog attacked her son the same year Joe made his appearance on Chef Ramsay's reality show. Talk about a tumultuous storyline in real life. But in March of 2012, Sage Restaurant, an American slash Italian eatery, took over the location that Campania had originally operated in. Surprisingly, it garnered mostly positive reviews, making a fresh start for the location. It's worth noting that Sage Restaurant appears to have no direct connection to Campania. Fast forward to 2023, and Sage isn't just standing, but thriving. Impressively, Sage Restaurant boasts an outstanding 4.5 star rating on its Yelp page, showcasing sustained excellence over the years. The transformation from Campania's troubled past to Sage's enduring success adds a unique chapter to the restaurant's history. It proves that even in the ever-evolving culinary world, stories can take unexpected and uplifting turns. So, that's just about everything I know about the worst family restaurant in Kitchen Nightmares history. But despite how bad it was, I really feel for the family here. What a rough way things had to end. Now, can you think of any more Kitchen Nightmares owners who aren't among us today? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below and I'll feature them in my upcoming videos. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.